Today I'm joined by Sandra Huggett, who fans of Coronation Street will undoubtedly recognise as one of the most infamous recurring characters in the show over the past few years, hard-faced police officer D.S. McKinnon. Sandra, thank you so much for stopping by for a chat today. Pleasure, Michael. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> no, it's 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 great. I've been kind of wondering for a little while. About, should, shall we ask Sandra to come on? And I I think why not? I think you've, it's quite interesting to hear from um some of the the, the recurring characters, the guest characters, and how yeah. how it's different for for them. What sort of experience they get being on the on a show like Curry? Have you been plucking up the courage because you thought I might be a bit scary? Well, you know, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I only know of you from D.S. McKinnon, and she is pretty yeah. scary. She, I have she to say. Is she is quite fierce, isn't she, really? Yeah, but, but we, we've talked to Conor McIntyre as well, and if we can take on oh, him. Well, I mean, probably one of the most charming <laughs> men on the universe. He, he certainly is. Isn't he? Not in like life. Pat Phelan at all. Although, actually, Pat Phelan's quite charming if, if, well, if he wants yeah, something out of you. He is. Yeah, he's charming, yeah, in a kind of crafty, deceptive <laughs> way. But no, Connor is, is one of the nicest people you would ever meet. He, he is, he's lovely. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing what he does on the screen. Yeah. So had you been much of a viewer of Coronation Street before you got the, the part? I have, yes, over the years, off and on. Probably more when I was a little bit younger than yeah. when I was at college and stuff. And then as I've had a family and, you know, it, it sort of clashes a little bit with my bedtime mm. and her bedtime. Not my bedtime, sorry. <laughs> I'm her to bed. I don't get to bed that early. Um, and so... I've sort of dipped in and out of it more recently, but yeah, I used to be quite an avid follower back in the day when I was much younger. Has, um, had it always been your ambition to, to be in the show? What, what kind of thing attracted you to, to the role? Well, I love the north of England. I'm not from the north, as you can probably hear, <laughs> um, but I started working up there God, many years ago now um, just sort of fell into it really did a job up there and then more and more cast and directors um, sort, of, sort of thought of me as a northerner so would get hmm. me in for different jobs and I started to forge good relationships with casting people up there in the north of England and we just sort of really grew to love the place really so I've always had a real soft spot for Manchester Yorkshire all thereabouts and um, so I do kind of love the soap for it's kind of it's the fun element to it as well you know even though I know don't play a particularly funny <laughs> character but the kind of the warmth of the show which you you know you don't see so much of in EastEnders and stuff yeah. you know obviously I went to college in London. I didn't grow up down that way, but I was there from about the age of 18, you know, and everyone in London watches EastEnders and stuff. And I did watch EastEnders too. But um, it would get a bit depressing sometimes, whereas Corey always had these fabulous, colourful characters, you know, but with a lot of warmth and heart, but also, mm. you know, real gritty, especially more so now, you know, these storylines, they're just done so well, but there's also humour there, you know, so it, it's not, there is an, it's a nice place to escape to as well, yeah. you know, it's not just a real raw, hard reality, which some soaps can be, I think, and it's also, it's just real, it just feels very real, I think, Corey. It's um, interesting also. to hear you say about the warmth and the humour, because you lived through the Kate Oates era, which um, people are saying, oh, it's so dark, so dark, <laughs> It's, know, it's nice. I, I don't mind the, the dark stories, but I, I completely see there's there's still been loads of humour over the past few years. I'm glad that you lot. agree. And I think in real life there is, you know, e even when we're going through tough times, there is, you know, that I've had moments in my life just, you know, really heavy, um, dark periods to go through. Um, and there's always, there's always, you know, some humour in that, whether it be a bit... <laughs> Mm. Bit of dark humor, you know, you've got you've got to do that. You've got to find it to get through things. You yeah, know? and and I think it's it is real to have that. Um, but I think you know when I was growing up, it maybe it was a little bit more. It was it was more light then. It was considered the kind of the funny soap, wasn't yes. it? When I was younger, um, and I know it has got a bit darker. But I think it's just had to it's had to develop as you know as times have and. You know, as things in TV, you know, if, if other people are doing it, you know, they have they have to address certain things, and it, it's right to, because yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on that we have to deal with day to day that that isn't all jolly, and it's got to keep its feet down there, on, you know, um, on the ground and and um, up to date with everything that's going on and people are going through and and um, and show and it does it brilliantly, you know, and and show these people. Um, going through things that 
viewers have gone through yeah. themselves and some tragic things and, and to help and support and maybe guide a bit. Mm, definitely. Maybe, I think it's still, comfort, yeah, know? it has a very good balance still. I think it strikes just the just yeah, the right balance really to be balance, honest. I think. So yeah. Corey's seen quite a lot of police officers in minor roles over the years. What is it do you think that's made D.S. McKinnon stand out over so many others? Because lots of people recognise you and remember you. And it, What is it about uh, D.S. McKinnon, do you think? Oh, that's nice to hear. I, I don't know, really. I think they've just, they just wrote her really well from the offset. So when she first arrived for the, sort of, uh, for the Maria storyline, with the yeah. Stalker storyline, that was the first time you saw her. And they wanted, she, she was written very hard then from the off because they wanted that sort of antithesis, I think, with, with Sammy as character of Maria, you know, who mm. was very soft and gentle. And they couldn't believe that this, this real sort of bullish woman was going to... Um, be putting her through hell really mm. and so she came in and her, her, I think they just needed her, the function of her then was to be mean, I think with the other storylines that come afterwards with who pushed Ken, you know, and then the Connors stuff more recently uh, it hasn't been so important that, that you know, that she be that tough and no. that hard you know, but because she's been established now like that, you know that, that's what carries through and I think I've just tried to play her a little bit like she's a bit sort of tired of her job. She's like, she never, she went for the promotion that sort of never seemed to come. Mm. And I think it's almost like she's given up because I think sometimes, you know, people, you know, pe pe I, I, I just wanted her to seem like she's a bit bored sometimes of her job mm. because I think um, if we're not careful, you know, we can, especially with people, it can actors like me that are popping in just for a little bit we can put too much into it if we're not careful yeah. you know and then i think that's slightly unrealistic you have to imagine she gets up every day and does this mm. day in day out and how let's see how many times have we seen her now on that show and she doesn't really get the conclusion she wants no she's not very good i mean her cold case file is piling high isn't it? <laughs> she's not very good at nailing it at the end but she's very good at arresting people here, there, and, and, and trying to get through. And then, for whatever reason, whether it's like you know, with the Ken um, storyline, whether it's just like she just can't go any further because um, you know it, it, it's out of her hands. You know, mm. if, if if you know, not going into all the details of that, but if 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 family member doesn't want to prosecute somebody, then you can't do anything about yeah. it. Or um, you know that. So she keeps hitting the brick wall, and and that, that's just the three instances we've seen her on the show. But it must happen for her day in day out. So I kind of like the kind of slightly laconic, sort of tired feeling of her. The fact that she can't be asked <laughs> to smile and ingratiate people. You know, she hasn't really got much bedside manner. No. It just makes her more fun to play and probably a bit more entertaining. The amount of people I meet and they're like, oh, I always laugh when you're on, and then you think, oh my god, but she's not really very funny, <laughs> no. is she? But, I imagine she thinks. I imagine she thinks not Coronation Street again. That street, one street. There's a hotbed of crime. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, she's like. Oh, Put the police tape up. Evacuate oh, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's it, isn't it? And then it's quite nice now when you go back. It's nice to be asked about because, like you know, when, you, when you're going in to the Rovers to, you know, question someone or ask them to come down the station, and then you see someone in there, you know, like Tracy Barlow that you had in last time, mm. you know, for questioning, and she she gets away with something every month it seems doesn't it yeah. and so and, th and there's just a little nod to her like all oh, right so i'm not coming for you this time <laughs> maybe next month sort of thing yeah it's quite nice to just have that um yeah have that um yeah continuity and the fact that there is a bit of history with these characters even though you might not be coming for them now i mean you know like some of the other characters are like oh she's back <laughs> who are you back for and it's kind of like quaking in the boots but i think she needs to nail someone soon. Otherwise, she's going to become the laughing stock. I know. Isn't she? Totally, totally. She's not going to be feared anymore. She's going to be like, oh, don't worry. She, she's, she's getting a bit of a reputation for arresting the wrong person. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Did um did you always knew that you, know that you'd be coming back for more than one story, or or was it just no, where you, you you were no, hired never. for the Kaz and Maria storyline yeah, and then exactly. It... Yeah, it's just hired for those sort of six weeks. I think it was, mm. and then I was just really. Um, pleased to hear, you know, that there might be something at the end of that. You know, they said to my agent, "Oh, we, you know, 
Would you maybe be interested in coming back for more? So there was a possibility, but you know, you don't really no. take any of that to heart in this business because people make you promises all the time and it doesn't happen. So I was really pleased when they came out quite soon the following year, um, beginning of the year, to mm. come in for that fantastic Barlow storyline, which was. I loved that really, story. Oh, I that, loved it. That I was, mean, it was uh, that was one of my favorite Curry stories for for a long time. Oh, Definitely my favorite it? of the year. Oh, Honestly, it really was. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it the brilliant. mystery of who it was. Oh, it was lovely. It was brilliant, wasn't it? It was twisting and turning. And, yes. I mean, oh, I, you know, you can. Get, it's brilliant because you know, at Corey, they won't. They they only send me my episodes, so I don't get to see everything in between. Mm. And I might have like a whole week where I'm not in investigating anyone or questioning anyone. And I don't. So I don't see those scripts. So I am literally coming in, going. <laughs> I actually don't know what happened there, you know, or all the stuff that the viewers get to see about who it really was, or you know, so and so and go cover for me, right? Because she's going to ask you about this. <laughs> I think I don't get to read any of that, so I actually am coming in cold a lot of the time, not knowing what on earth has just gone on. Did you? Um, quite exciting. Quite did, did you try and piece together and, and work out who the culprit was yourself? Did you do a bit of detective work? I did try to because I didn't want to know, and I told them I don't want to know who it is. And the, and the, and actually, it it was kept very secret anyway mm. amongst the cast for a long time. But I did sort of say I really don't want to know anyway. Um, and so yeah, I get I guessed, you know, kept guessing and it kept changing my mind. Yeah, so and I must have been right at some point because I think I guessed it was everyone at some point. <laughs> um, but um, no, it was really good. I I really enjoyed that. It was a really lovely juicy storyline yeah. it was it was great it's really good but yeah i don't know and then i didn't know from the next to, from that point to the connors you know just you just hope they'll ring and call you back mm. and ask if you can come in so i've been lucky so far so. yeah do you ever feel sorry for mckinnon because she doesn't have the same sort of insight into the cases she's investigating as maybe the viewers have so viewers know things that and you don't <laughs> nice that's quite interesting when i've watched crime things or whatever on tv and i know a bit more than that person investigating yeah. it i quite like that feeling i think it's i think it's it's quite nice for the viewer to be sometimes one step ahead mm. of the person investigating um it just makes it a bit more of an interesting dynamic to watch i think yeah. but i mean um but so from my point of view uh playing a detective no i don't think so i think it's um I think it's just it's 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 just good played like that. It, it, mm. You know, it is what it is. The information you've got is the information you've got, and that's it. Yeah. You know, and, and you've just got to to work with you know what you've got really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Go, going back to the viewers' reaction to the character, do you think that we're supposed to see McKinnon as as a force for good on on the side of justice, or or is she more of like a you know a meddlesome nuisance who gets in the way of a good bit of soap villainy? Are we supposed to like you? <laughs> That's quite difficult, really, because I mean, you know, you will always get a mixed response with a character like that. Yeah. Gonna, people are going to love her, and people are going to hate her. Mm. Um, I think, I think she is, even though she doesn't, you know, she you don't particularly warm to her. I think she is, you know, a good cop in the sense that, you know, when she. You know, she, there, there's there's nothing underhand going on there. No. I don't think she's dodgy in any sense. No, no. Plays and, by the know, book, definitely. Yeah, play, goes by the book and all the rest of it. But I think um, she, she, she doesn't give a toss if anyone likes her or not. <laughs> and I think sometimes she does play the... Um, she does play the... Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna really crack this one, you know. So sometimes in the interview room, she's particularly hard on people, yeah. and she enjoys that. But I don't think it's particularly put upon. I think it's just the way, I, I I've decided. I think it's just the way she is. <laughs> you know, that's that's how she does her job. She grinds people down. She's not pleasant. She is intimidating, and it's all done probably because that's the type of woman she is. I don't mm -hmm. think there's necessarily much more of another side to her. But I reckon, you know, because you think about all the um, all the um, DCs and everything that, that come alongside her, they change a lot. Yes, <laughs> they the do. Time. I reckon nobody wants to work with them. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God, no, I don't want to be with McKinney. But then I have <laughs> had a couple of little relations where we've, there's been flashes of a smile with with a partner, you know. And we we deliberately occasionally just snuck one in, you know, just to show that actually there is, you know, there is, she is human, 
And yeah. most of the time, you only see her when she's grilling someone or questioning someone. You don't... There's hardly... There's been... I could count them on one hand, the amount of scenes there's been with just cop-to-cop -cop scenes. You know, they're, they're always cop and somebody who's been arrested yeah. or um, a victim or, you know, the family of... Uh, you, And therefore, she's playing that role, you know, like like anyone would in their job. Mm. So you don't really get to see the real person sometimes. So there's, there's only been a few. I'm quite. It would be quite nice to get to know her a little bit more outside of work or even just... In her, with her peers at work, you yeah. Know? So yeah. I think I've had one scene with um, one of the actors um, that I work with. Um, we had a scene with Phil Rosen, and just just a scene in the actual um, in the station, but not with anyone. So mm. it could just be a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more fun. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, you just don't get to see that side of her. Really. So mm. I, don't, I don't know whether. Um, um, I think I kind of have to not care if people like her like I think she would not care mm. if if people like her. But I think they've probably written her. They kind of want people to hate her a bit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I can think, so I can she, think she could be the next battle axe, couldn't she? We've we've got Maureen Lippman's character. You could you could move in. Yeah. I, I don't imagine McKinnon having like a, a husband or children. I think she's married to the job. She could come in and. Yeah, I get that. I think <laughs> that she's that she's that she's possibly alone, but I don't think she was. I don't think she always was. Oh, I she lost someone. I, I think it's just happened. <laughs> yeah, I reckon there's a sadness there about her, and I think that's partly why maybe she's the way she is. But also, and, and I reckon that she probably was married to the job, and, and still is to a certain extent, but I think also there is a tiredness with it now. Yes, yeah. Uh, you know, because she's not a DI, you know, she's she's still just a DS, you know, yeah. and, and I think there was a hunger in her at some point, but I think it's gone a bit. Yeah. I just think it's just a bit more interesting if it's just... And also, with her record, you know, she's not... She is... She gets it wrong quite a lot. <laughs> 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 so I think, you know, she maybe... That maybe that love of the job has waned yeah. a bit. And maybe what and what else is she left with? And like you said, I don't think she's got great fulfilment outside of no. outside of her work. <laughs> and I think that all seeps into the way she is yeah. and what you see in her hmm. sort of thing. So, know, so, she needs a good somebody to love. She I'm does, doesn't she? Well, there's still plenty of single guys on on the street, so you, you never know. <laughs> if you came back onto the street, um, which which yeah. we hope you do, are there any characters that you'd like to see McKinnon having dealings with, or you know, locking horns with any, or or, or, or are there any villains that in the past that you'd have liked to have seen her take down? Maybe. Christ, I, mean, I really wanted to take down Felix. I bet. <laughs> I really wanted to. I mean, was really, really, really hoping for that. So I was gutted about that one. Um, <laughs> oh, well, Tracy Barlow. Oh, yeah. that'd be great. Tracy gets away with murder, doesn't she? Yeah, well, she I literally mean, has. I mean, literally. I mean, how many times? And I reckon that, you know, if anyone's sort of been really up in her face, that she'd like to tear down a peg or two, it's her, mm. if, you know. So that would be good, but then we don't want Tracy to go. So no, I know really, uh, that's a problem. That a success, because <laughs> we love Kate, and we can't have that. But you know, just more, more in your face with Tracy mm. Barlow would be good. Wouldn't See, it? that's the thing but, with the uh, Pat Phelan as well. If you'd have taken Pat Phelan down, I'd, I don't think I'd have liked Dears McKinnon anymore because I'd always resented your four X. I always wanted him to get away with it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everyone did, didn't they? You just like just keep getting away with it because you're just so brilliant. Yeah. I know. Well, that's probably a good thing then in that in that case. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think you know, yeah, Tra Tracy's an interesting character, isn't she? Mm, just definitely. more head to head with her, and I think with her being a woman as well, I think be good because she's obviously a very strong, confident woman, and yeah. and so is DS McKinnon. So I think it would be a, a very interesting dynamic to see more of those two. Mm. Together, um, yeah, yeah. Did you, when you were working on Corrie, did you sort of make some good relationships with the cast while you were there? Yeah, yeah. That God, they're so nice, and I know everyone just says that about work and stuff, but they—it's such a lovely, warm feeling when you go back to Corrie. It's mm. just. It's so lovely. You know, it's, it's it's busy work, it's hard work, everyone's got their family, so it's in and out. There's not, like, loads of social partying. Not for me, anyway. You know, <laughs> not that they told you about. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I just, like, I'm like Billy No Mate. <laughs> but, you know, everyone's, you know, they come in and, and they do the job and, and they've got their families there and they live there. You know, I mm. don't. I'm obviously staying up there and stuff. But, yeah. um, 
but when you walk in there, I mean, they're so friendly, everyone, not just the cast, but all the crew, all production, my God, everybody. It's, nice they're so hear. welcoming. It's, it's, it's just lovely to get back there. And, mm. and it's, and like Richard Hawley, I worked with Richard years ago on Family Affairs. Yes. So he's a, a lovely face that I've known for a long time. It's always love to see him. And, you know, just gorgeous. Kim is just lovely to have been working with her recently, obviously, with all the kind of stuff. Mm. Just yeah. gorgeous. They're all so down to earth. You know, yeah, that's what we always hear from the, from the actors that we speak to. We, uh, I spoke to um, really nice. I spoke to George Banks a few uh, months ago, who who played Henry, and yeah. also just a re- recurring character, and he said the same thing. Yeah. He, even though he wasn't a you know, a main cast member, everyone welcomed yeah. him just the same. Yeah, they're incredibly friendly, mm. and that ma- makes all the difference with that sort of job when you're coming yeah. back as a sort of recurring character, but you don't live up there and you're not in every day. It can feel quite intimidating. These jobs can be quite hard when you pop in and out of something, but if the environment is is as it is there, then it's just so lovely. You know, everyone is so friendly. Oh, oh, we're so pleased to see you back. You know, <laughs> and they just and they. They gen- you know, they're proper genuine, down to earth people. There's no airs and graces yeah. in that in that building. Yeah. They're all just lovely, really lovely people. You, you mentioned lovely. You, you mentioned family affairs earlier. How did you yeah. find this the experience of being on Corrie was similar to or different from from that soap, which was like, twenty years ago? God, yeah. That, that was one of your first well, TV roles, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was my actual first. Was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, because it was my first, it's very different in the sense that I I was so young then and I was completely inexperienced. Mm. And I'd left drama school and um, even though they teach you, you know, all sorts of stuff, you know, they, very little TV technique is taught. I think we had two weeks across a three-year course. You yeah. know, it's all about theatre and stuff. So yeah. I really learnt everything at Family Affairs. So, you know, it, it's similar in the sense that it's fast. Family Affairs was faster because really? it, it, it yeah i think it, it it was even faster i mean it might have it might just have felt like that now when i compare them mm. um but uh it might be also because i was in nearly every scene in family affairs because i was yeah you were you were, so, you're a main I, family member weren't you until you got blown up yeah, yeah i know <laughs> so i was running back and forth the whole time you know getting different hair and makeup different costumes so it just felt more frantic whereas for this it's much more relaxing for me but mm. also the atmosphere at cory is much more relaxed it's much it's very chilled out on set even though they get through a lot every day mm. um and now that it been on so many times you know they are they are having to put out as much as family affairs which was five days a week yeah but um um but it always feels very cool and calm at cory you know that there's never any mad rush. It doesn't feel frantic. It feels very chilled out. Yeah. Um, so, but yes, there's lots of similarities with all the multi cameras you know, on the set. Mm. Um, that's you know that that doesn't happen in a lot of TV. You know, you don't have so many cameras. Mm. They're all happening at the same time, and you can get a scene done in one go. You know, if it all if it all goes well. Yeah. Um, you can you know you it, it, there is a possibility of getting it all done in one take and moving on that quickly. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's um, yeah, it it, it 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 yeah, it is. I suppose there's lots of similarities. Really, I haven't really stopped to think no. about it. I suppose um, it was a long time ago as well, wasn't it? Yeah, Done a lot more since yeah. then. Just just finally yeah. before we go, have you what kind of ambitions do you have as as an actor looking ahead? Have you got any anything in the pipeline? Well, um, oh god, it's always difficult, isn't it? We always want to do so many different things. Mm. It's just like we want to do everything. Um, I've just uh, actually this week, um. I had the pleasure of doing um, an episode of People Just Do Nothing, which I don't know if you know about this programme. It I, started out... I think, is it, have there been... No, I haven't heard of it, but, but were there clips of that? I saw some clips of you in something on the internet the other day. Yeah, that's what it would have been, because yeah. Series 5 started this week. Mm. Um, and um, it started out um, online, and it was on BBC Three, and then now uh, this fifth and final series is out on BBC Two. Um, and... Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant comedy, and it, it, it's just great. And for people who are listening who know it, well, they'll know what it's all about. For people who don't know it, just have a little Google of it and, and, and look for it. it. It's so funny, and these guys have written it themselves. It's a mock... It's it, it's basically, you know, like a mock documentary, basically. That's the whole mm. thing set up. These guys in West London are running a pirate radio station. But they're funny as hell. That job was fantastic, because it was 
it, there was a loose script, but it was just heavily improvised. And actors don't really get free reign mm, like that yeah. to play about with a script, you know. And when you do a job like that, you suddenly realise, actually, gosh, it's really liberating. Hmm. And actually, as an actor, normally, it, it, it you are quite confined to what people have written and told you to say and what pe- how people would like you to do it. Yeah. You, you know, you, you can express bit but actually you quite it's quite restrictive so i really enjoyed that process i went up for something this week actually which is also would have a lot of improvising it a film which i won't say anything about mm-hmm. because it's like i don't want to jinx it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but also um the guys at rough cut tv you know um who have made loads of stuff they're um they're making a a, a movie now of this of people just do nothing i think that's they're finishing the series and they're going to make a film of it oh, okay. america are doing a, a thing of it like the office you know they've bought it they're yeah. going to do its own tape which i'll cool. have to check it out because honestly i hadn't i hadn't seen check anything it of it before i'll have a look absolutely hilarious it's a bit marmite love it or hate it but mm. i really think most people should love it because cool. it's just it's great comedy really really funny yeah. so i'm hoping something might happen there in the future i don't yeah. know um but more um comedy really is what i've always wanted to do from the beginning mm. and it was harder at the beginning to get those jobs for whatever reason they seem to be coming in a little bit more now for me i, I don't know if being older helps a bit i don't know <laughs> but um those doors are opening a little bit more and i think um you know, a, a varied career would be really lovely, yeah. you know, across TV and film. Um, but a, a little bit more comedy would be great. And hopefully a bit more Corrie as well. Well, a bit more... Corrie. A bit more comedy in Corrie would be Yes, good. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, what I was going to say. Listen, it's been it's been so nice talking to you today. Thank you uh, for for coming onto the podcast. Uh, I, uh, yeah, it's lovely learning about you and finding that you are not as mean and scary as the S. McKinnon. <laughs> oh, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.